Well, I may as well upload a video promoting and reading out some old school, well, old school, 2000s radio music uploads, reviews of New Picnic Time by Pier Ubu. Just a very quick bit of background information here. Third album by American rock band Pier Ubu, released in September 1979 by Chrysalis Records. Reportedly, the album sessions were stressful and contentious, and after touring, the group disbanded. They would reform a matter of months later, with Mayo Thompson replacing founding guitarist Tom Herman. The lyrics for the song The Voice of the Sand are based upon the poetry of Vachel Lindsay. Vachel? I'm not sure. I'm not as familiar with him as I probably ought to be. Anyway, some reviews I'm going to read out here on Pierre Ubu's New Picnic Time. A very interesting album, in my opinion. Almost my favourite of the three, but maybe that's just because it's the most... I probably spent the least amount of time with it, and so it's the most unique to my ears and still interesting to me. Maybe I'd feel differently in five and gravitate toward the first or second more so. The first review is from one Rake on July 28th, 2005. First review I'd like to read out anyway. And it's in Italian, and so I've actually employed Google Translate here, so this might not be perfect or as, or as well articulated or, you know, f free-flowing as the, as the original translation, so bear with us. At the end of the 1978 tour, Peru Bu begin recording for the new album, whose working title, Goodbye, will eventually be replaced by New Picnic Time. Released in 1979, the album abandons the claustrophobia of dub housing and implements a stinging reinterpretation of rock and roll, bearing in mind the lessons of the Red Crayola and, above all, Captain Beefheart, whose Trout Mask replica is, without a doubt, the main reference. Industrial music is no longer the backbone of the songs. The friendship with Mayo Thompson, in fact, inaugurates the transition towards the visionary psychedelia that had produced so much sparkle right on the Red Crayola's debut album that The Parable of Arable Land, which was a jewel of chaotic and disconcerting experimentation in the sacred year 1967. Moving in murky and at times impenetrable waters, their Ubu systematically deconstruct popular music for a slow but progressive process of abstraction. Alongside the pieces that retain the powerful rhythmic charge of the origins, due above all to the Krauss Maimon axis, impressionist sonorites sonorities make their way aimed at the search for an atmosphere full of rarefied technological visions. In this dichotomy lies the strength of the disc and, above all, its destabilizing capacity. It was said of the rhythm section, the propulsive force of the bass and, su and the pseudo-anarchic spatiality of the drums constitute the secure foundation on which Thompson's increasingly eclectic voice, Herman's essential guitar playing, and Ravenstein's sound and anti-academic painting are anchored. The per this perfect synergy is immediately evident in the opening, the fabulous sequel, 49 Guitars and One Girl, more anarchic and full of animalistic exuberance, maintain the same line, the dance of Small was Fast, which unfolds on a pseudo-funky trajectory, brilliantly seasoned by the unusual Ravenstein, One Less Worry, assortment of electronic squiggles, guitar swirls, and a feverish and insatiable chant, which transforms Thomas' body and soul into a stage for our obsessions. More linear, however, are Make Hay, immersed in an electronic whirlwind, and Kingdom Come, with tribal percussiveness and synthetic trumpets. On the more properly avant-garde side, the experiments of a small dark cloud are located. Rarified percussions, whispers, artificial throbs, solitary piano notes and free vocalizations. All the dogs are barking. Glacial metropolitan vision punctuated by a guitar that obsessively repeats a single chord, clear as metal in the raging rain. Goodbye. Guitar phrasing and pindaric flights of the synth, almost a sound transposition of space and silence. And finally, the voice of the sand, in which the synthetic sound has now reached a vital awareness, reducing the human voice to a pure ancestral whisper. Although still wrapped in an air of decadence and cosmic disaster, new picnic time manages, thanks to Thomas's lyrics, influenced by his conversion to the cult of Jehovah, to keep in touch with the things of everyday life days. In this sense, under the chaotic musical structure, an unprecedented clarifying will makes its way, which, while recognizing the darkness of existence, still manages to hope for a saving revelation. Listening to New Picnic Time means imagining Captain Beefheart lost in the American province, devastated by industrialization. That was pretty glorious, I, I will say. It's like some continental philosophy we have there. Now, second review. This one is actually published in English. Gregory Peckery, wonderful, wonderful name, August 7th, 2007, 
David Thomas yelping, it's me again, is the first thing you hear on the opening cut, the fabulous sequel. That should tell you just about everything going on in Ubu land at the time of their third album. They faced the prospect of confronting a small but loyal cult following who were blown away by hearing something they had never heard before, now just want to hear more on of it. On New Picnic Time, Ubu give them a little bit of that while still moving into new territory. This is a transitional album, though way better than the tag would imply. I'm willing to trust Ubu to give me something I haven't heard before but worth hearing, and I'm approaching it all in retrospect anyway, so what the fuck. Peer Ubu are of course from Cleveland, and so am I. Unlike me, Ubu could only have come from Cleveland, specifically the rundown Cleveland of the mid-70s. They are as accurate an encapsulation of time and place as any band I can think of. They are truly industrial, not industrial music. This is the music of cities with docks and bridges and endless grey skies. I had to leave. Ubu remains. Unlike the first two albums, Early Signals and the brilliant Data Panic EP, I don't hear songs jumping out at me on New Picnic Time. It's all about mood and the work as a whole. Yes, there are moments, 49 Guitars and One Girl is amazing, a true Ubu classic, Small Was Fast is funk from people who never dance, the true Ubu dance party, All The Dogs Are Barking is a good song with a great title, otherwise we get a bit abstract. Sounds I enjoy but don't always listen to, I accept it as Ubu. From here they would get even more abstract, then disappear, then go semi-commercial, then disappear again, then go back to being Ubu. New Picnic Time is slightly better than Devo's Freedom of Choice. Uh, maybe overall, but I love Freedom of Choice. Devo only do so wrong for me. I don't know. Mainly due to the fact that everything on Picnic is worth listening to. Everything on Freedom of Choice is also worth listening to. That, hey. There's one song on there that's not so good. Gates of Steel is not so great a card. I'll grant you that, actually. No, you're probably right. Fair enough. Excuse me. Nothing as high as Freedom's best, but nothing forgettable. I might agree with that. I mean... You know, Ton of Love, Mr. B's Ballroom, Planet Earth, A Girl You Want, one of the great songs of all time, obviously. Yeah, wonderful stuff and freedom of choice. Devo geniuses, obviously. We have a winner. Anyway, that's the end of Gregory Peggery's review. Now let's read a couple more. Just two, I believe. Yeah, let's try out from Doxman, September 30th, 2012. Each Pur Ubu album keeps getting stranger, but somehow they're all great listens. This third album by the group does what the band is known for by now, such as the crazy experimental song A Small Dark Cloud and the upbeat opener The Fabulous Sequel, in which Thomas screams, It's me again, like he is everybody's favourite singer. And he is, right? This album expands the Ubu palette with new emphasis on words, with some songs saying in the title what they mean. The somewhat funky drive of Make Hay, Thomas's autobiographical Jehovah's Kingdom Come, and mini-song The Voice of Sand and other songs placing an emphasis on feelings, like Goodbye, that sounds like a true send-off. 49 Guitars and One Girl and Small is Fast, a new Ubu masterworks of true weirdness, like only this band could pull off. With lyrics like, it was a sound he heard, what a funny thing to feel, well ah, uh, don't panic, and screams of, I waited, I waited, I waited for you, which mean nothing and everything at the same time. The band controls nervous energy like no other band before them, the only competition slash comparison being perhaps Talking Heads. There are a couple of lulls on this record which make it a tad less consistent than dub housing or modern dance, like One Less Worry where nothing important takes place, or All the Dogs Are Barking and A Small Dark Cloud, unique as it is, which are merely good not great. The latter song talks about flies in the ointment, but pales in comparison to a similar song by English band Wire called I Am The Fly, released the year prior to this. We all know I love Wire and, and Chairs Missing is amazing, but I Am The Fly is kind of... The fact that that's considered the highlight of Wire just makes me think this is like... People who aren't intelligent enough to appreciate why are finding something, oh yeah, I'm the flies catchy, yeah. at least a year prior to this. The band has a purposeful loss of any rhythm at times, which is honestly the way they expand on this record by embracing the spontaneity of the moment rather than having a steady flow to each song. Such willing to experiment, though, is surprisingly easy to enjoy, and in his own way, very easy to enjoy for avant-garde rock. Maybe accessible is too strong a word for such a challenging record, but if you are into this kind of music after getting modern dance, give this a whirl. One more, I think I'll read out from one ILY, October 2nd, 2008. Peer Ubu showed no signs of slowing down with new picnic time as the uneasy listening watercolour splash the fabulous sequel showed basically Thomas raving over a lounge jazz theme gone bad. The even more fragmented and menacing 49 guitars and one girl sounded as if someone cut the previous song to pieces and played it at the wrong speed. The industrial acid trip, a small dark cloud, really went out of order, displaying runny sound effects, a deflating bass line, sparse accompaniments, and insane clownish vocals. 
Small was fast instead opted for a dramatic feel, emphatic beat and baroque choir effects. All the dogs are barking continued in this vein, but with a more sonambulistic tone. Another gag, one less worry, veered towards damaged funk and far out psychedelia, while the ethnic dirge goodbye continued to push the boundaries of their deformed show, which culminated with their last modern, latest modern dance kingdom come. With their third masterpiece in a row, Per Ubu showed that they had few equals between 1978 and 1980. Very true, I would agree. And I'll just go for one more. Why not? If there's any more. I like the name. We'll go for NerveNet, October 19th, 2013. Sometimes this feels better than four stars. I don't talk like that. Oh, whatever. And other times I'm listening to a small dark cloud or the voice of the sand and not getting with the program. But the rest of the album is damn near amazing. And I'm particularly enamored at, of Scott Krauss' performance on 49 Guitars and One Girl. But throughout the band is in peak form, and so is Thomas. He's returned to his Jehovah's Witness, registering barely a blip on the radar lyrically, the last song only. His vocals are, as others have noted, superb if you like this sort of thing. And to go back to the subject of lyrics, Thomas shines here, brimming with a positivity that modern dance fans may not quickly cotton to, even when the music sounds somber, as in all the dogs are barking. Highlights for me are the fabulous sequel, 49 Guitars and One Girl, Small Was Fast, and Goodbye. But this is basically just another chapter in the great Thomas slash Krauss slash Maimon slash Ravenstein slash Herman lineup. Well worth your time, and even the two cuts I bagged on earlier are interesting in the right frame of mind. I'm going to close it here. There's nothing else I have to add here. Um, would recommend... You may as well listen to this as the third album. Listen to the Modern Dance and Dub Housing first, just because... You know, it was the third part of a story, and you may as well experience it in the way that the group are kind of expecting people to hear them. So I suppose I'll close it here. Thanks again, my friends. Appreciate it immensely. Thanks again.